timeline. All right, to get started, we're going to open up a new scene here and look at this timeline thing. So if I left click and drag across this timeline, you can see that this gray square appears and it looks like it's scrubbing across the timeline. So anytime I say, I need to you to scrub across the timeline to see what is going on, that is what I mean by scrubbing across the timeline. If we right click on this, we can go playback speed and we can go to real time. Now as I scrub across the timeline, it will play in real time if I hit play, it's going to play in real time. So time. Right here we have these numbers. And let's say for a second I treat these as seconds. Okay, We'll look at them as seconds. Right now, let's say we have 24 seconds. we got to develop a film that's like 500 seconds long. Well, if I wanted to work on the entire film all at once, see every second along the way, I could just expand this out, and now I could see all 500 frames. If I had a sphere out here, and I designated, let's say, a keyframe to it, and I'm just going to hit a, a button. I'm not going to get into keyframes just yet. That's in the next video. But right here, I've set a keyframe. And if I want to know exactly where that keyframe is, it's very hard. I can like click and drag and try to get over the top of it perfectly and figure out where it's at. Maybe it's at 111 frames or seconds. Well, when I click and drag, I can zoom in on that one section. And I'm going to find out that it's actually 112 frames that it's set at, or 112 seconds. So that is how you zoom in on things. If you're working on a section of the, your video, your whole entire video, the 500 seconds, let's say I'm working on the first 30 seconds. I could type in 30 here, and now I'm working with frame 1 through 30 or, one, or 30 seconds. So that's what these numbers are. Okay, We have the larger picture and then the zoomed in area. All right. Now, let's go into the little running guy, which is located here. Another important thing is frames, okay, or seconds, as I keep saying, frames or frames per second. Incidentally, another way to get into this is also by going into Window, Setting in Preferences, Preferences, and you can get into it by going into Time Slider. Same menu, just this one has an easy button. You can just click, and there you are. All right, we have playback speed. We have play every frame, real time, half time, twice, and I can even stipulate other. Now, important to know that this is always going to be changing. Um, if you are developing something for cinema, it's going to be 24 frames per second. If you're developing something, let's say you have a handy cam or uh, a digital video camcorder. The digital video camcorder says it records at 29.97 frames per second, which is usually in the case of NTSC. Well, if you were developing some kind of 3D thing that's going to be integrated within the video footage that you shot with your digital video handy cam, you're going to have to match it. So in that case, you know, I'm going to have to say, well, it shoots at 29.97. So in here, I'm 29.97. That way you can gauge the speed next to the footage. So to say to a new student that there's always going to be a case where it's always going to be 70 frames or 80 frames or 90 frames, that's a, that's a complete lie. It's, it's whatever that you're actually, whatever company that you're working with is going to be shooting at, whatever their aim target is, and that's it. When you're working for video games, well, frames per second changes. It changes correlating to the um, how fast can that video game shoot or play frames per second on whatever machine that you're working on. So time is kind of irrelevant when it comes to that. And in that case, I like to use the play every frame. So if I did play every frame, let, let me run a scenario by you. 
I have a very fast computer. It plays every frame, okay? At which speed might be 39.97 frames per second. Bob, who runs Maya, uh, plays at every frame. He might be running a little professor calculator and having Maya play on it. So he can only play 16 frames per second. So play every frame. Okay, so in this case, we would want to say, if it's going to be a, an animation course, we would have to set in a number, some kind of number that would allow me to see the frames per second, the same as you see the frames per second, right? So that could be 60, it could be 24. You know, uh, the class uh, material that I use outside of the videos that I shoot, say 60 frames per second, but what I'm going to say is I'm going to be using 24 frames per second in, in this section. What you use should match mine. So in this case, for this class, I'm, say, I'm saying 24 frames per second. That way I can see the animation the same as you see the animation. All right, cool. Now that we got that argument out of the way. That's all you really have to know about time sliders. Uh, there's the ability to change it. Uh, there's the ability to scrub across it. And there's these numbers down below and your zoom tool. Now we have to look at keying, which is another important feature. So that's in the next video.